What's up guys, Justin here with DCGEssentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk a little bit about the simple deform modifier. That's a modifier that you can use to deform objects in simple ways like bending them and twisting them and other things like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so the way this modifier works is you can select an object like my default model that I have right here. And if you go under the modifier tab, you can actually open this up and you can add a simple deform modifier. And so what the simple deform modifier is going to do is that's going to allow you to bend and twist different objects. So you can apply simple deformations to an object without having to like do anything super complicated. So for example, if I apply a twist to this, so basically what this is going to do is this is going to twist your object. So for example, if I was to take the angle and adjust the angle, you can see how this is going to twist my object along the x-axis. If I was to select like the z-axis, then this would twist this along the z-axis. So you can see how that gets kind of weird. That's probably not the best direction for this particular model. Um, but you could select which axis things are going to be twisted along. And so in addition to that, you can also set limits to the way this works. So for example, let's say that I was going to twist this along the x-axis and I was to adjust my limits. So if I adjust my limits, you can see how what that means is if I set this at like 0.5 or something close to that, you can see how my twist doesn't actually occur until after half of my object proportionally. So you can see how only the back side of this is twisting and not the front. And so that's the twist function. You can also use this to bend and taper different objects. So let's go ahead and add a cube in here. So I'm going to do a shift A to add a cube and we'll just go to mesh cube. We'll scale this down a little bit and we'll align it right here. And then I'm also going to duplicate it along the Y axis. And let's scale this as well, or let's not scale it. Let's go into edit mode. And we'll just move this face out. We'll do the same thing for this other object as well. So just tap, or select this face, tap the G key, and then move this out along the red axis. And so one thing I wanna point out about this modifier is it works better when you have more geometry. So let's say for example that I wanted to take this object and twist it. So if I was to click on this, this uh, rectangular shape, add a simple deform modifier, and then try to twist it, one thing you're going to notice is pretty quickly you start getting this weird broken geometry in here. So if I hit the tab key you can see and go into edit mode you can see what the original object looked like. And you can see how this isn't really giving you a very good effect because there's no geometry breaking up this shape so that this can do like a gradual turn. So what it's doing instead is it's twisting one side of this 150 degrees and all you have is one edge between these two vertices so you're not getting a very good result. However, Let's say that we were to do the same thing with this object, but before we did that, let's hit the tab key and go into edit mode. And inside of edit mode, let's say that I was to do a control R and add some edge loops in here. So if I was to add some edge loops along this face, and then now let's apply that same modifier. So if we were to apply the simple deform modifier to this one, you can see how you're getting this gradual turn from one end to the other. And because you've got these individual vertices in here, so if you've got these individual, or because you've got these individual edges in here, this allows this to gradually twist an object. So the more detail you add to this, the more realistic and the better result you're going to get inside of Blender. So just note that if you start getting weird results like this one, you need to add some edge loops so that this can gradually apply the transformation. And so now I want to take a look at a different example and a different tool inside of the modifier. So let's say that I have this bench and I want to bend this bench so that it follows a curve. Well, what I can do if I just want this to be like a simple 180 degree bench is we can use the simple deform modifier to bend this along a shape. So you'll notice when I initially do this, um, it's twisting the object. What we want to do is we want to go to the second object right here, which is the bend option. So what the bend option is going to do is that's going to bend this along an axis that you select. So for example, right now, this isn't really doing what we want it to do, but let's try the Z axis. You can see how the Z axis would bend this up. Then the Y axis, it kind of gets us 
close, but it doesn't do exactly what we want it to do, right? You can see how it's bending some of this, but you're getting this weird deformation in here. Um, it is bending the object, but it's not quite doing what we want it to do. Um, and so this is where I want to talk about the concept of bending it relative to another object. Because right now you're getting kind of a weird bend result because it's bending it around this point that's central to the object itself, which is why you're getting this strange result. So what we can do though, is we can add an empty and then we can reference the empty. So in this situation, if I do a shift A, I go down to an empty and I'm just gonna add a plane axis right now. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift right click in order to set my 3D cursor, but then I'm gonna add an empty. And we'll just add a plane axis empty. So it's just an empty that's sitting in your model. There's no geometry associated with it or anything like that. Well now, with our bend modifier, what I wanna do is I wanna reference the empty. So you can click on this little eyedropper right here. You can click on this in order to reference that empty. Well now, if I bend this and I need to change my axis, so we probably want this to be along the Z axis, but you can see how now this object will bend based on that empty that I added in here. And notice that this is live. Um, so I was able to set this central point that my object is bent around. But if I was to use like the move tool in order to move my empty around, you can see how this is actually going to affect the way that this is bent. So you can use this to kind of stretch this if you want to, or kind of, uh, kind of really dial in this shape. But now if I was to look at this from a top view, you can see I was able to bend it 180 degrees around this point. So when using the bend function of the simple deform modifier, you can use it to bend an object around a point. And you can get some kind of interesting results by playing around with your limits as well. So like for example, if I was to set this so that it bent like halfway, you can see how I could bend this into a shape that follows a curve after my halfway point. So just kind of play around with that as well because you can really use it to generate some interesting shapes. So the taper modifier is going to affect the width of an object in one direction. So if I was to apply taper to this barrel, you can see how what this is gonna do is this is gonna take one end of this and it's gonna kind of drag it inward around a central point. Or if I push it this way, it's gonna taper it outward around that same point. So you can use this to create a tapered object. And this works the same way as the others, where it's gonna taper based on the axis that you have. So you can see I can use this in order to taper this end in, this end not in, if I want to, or along the Z axis as well. And then that's just gonna do the same thing. That's gonna taper that this way. So taper is fairly simple, but it can be very useful, especially for something symmetrical like this, if you wanna bring it in just a little bit around the top. And then finally, the stretch function is gonna allow you to stretch your object out along an axis. So let's apply a simple deform modifier to this UV sphere. And we're gonna set this to stretch. And so you're gonna notice with the stretch, this is gonna stretch this object out or flatten it out depending on which options you have selected. So you can see how you can use this to stretch this along this axis. And at a certain point, it stretches it out and kind of like inverts it. But up to that point, you can see how you can use this to create kind of an extended sphere or something like that. And you can do this for any of your axes. But then where it gets kind of interesting is in addition to being able to stretch this out along an axis, you can also set your limits so that only part of this object is getting stretched. So in this situation, for example, let's say I only wanted half of this to get stretched, I could set my limit or my starting limit to 0.51. You can see how now I can set this where the top part of this doesn't get deformed, but the bottom part does. So you can use this in order to kind of deform and stretch out an object. So you could see how you could set this to deform only part of your object. You can also lock your different axes in here so you could lock this so that it's only stretching this out along the Y axis and none of the others are getting deformed. So if you wanted to maintain this same width, but you wanted to stretch this out this way, you could lock this, you could lock the other axes associated with this in order to maintain that shape.
So that's kind of an intro to what these different modifiers can do. In the future, we'll get into some more specific uses for them. Personally, I find the twist and the bend are gonna be the most useful for me. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know these features were in here? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.